Hello, my name is Doug Marks. I'm an attorney with Worldwide Privacy Consultants. And today I'm going to answer the question, what is a DPA and how do I use one for GDPR and CCPA compliance? A DPA is a data processing agreement. So the term has been used quite a while, but it really took on significant meaning when Europe passed the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, and began enforcing it in 2018. People use the term now to apply really to any agreement that governs the management and control of personal information of individuals. Usually a DPA will be between companies. Uh, most of my clients are SaaS companies, software as a service. So I'm going to use examples from that experience. If you're not a SaaS company, the same principles will apply, but with a little bit of adjustment. For me to describe what a DPA is, we really have to get on the same page when it comes to terminology. So let me use an example of one of my clients to help define the terms that we'll be using. They'll change for different contexts, but once you understand the concepts, it'll be easier to plug in different terms. So let's jump right in. One of my clients provides a hotel reservation system to its customers. And there are several platforms out there, but let's call the software or the platform or other tools or applications the platform for our purposes. That software tool that these SaaS providers offer, let's just call the whole suite the platform. It could consist of you know, mobile applications, the desktop applications, just the whole system. Um, so in this case, my client is a SaaS provider. So let's call them the processor. And I'll describe wh uh, why later, but let's just um, get that in the books here. So my client, the processor, licenses the platform to its business partners or customers. And let's call those business partners controllers. And again, I'll describe why later. The controllers use the platform to manage the personal information or personal data of their customers. In my example, those customers would be guests at the hotel, but let's call them customers just to make this, make this description a little more broad based. Um, so in the case of my SaaS client, the processor, the processor, my client, provides the platform to about 800 different hotels in Europe. Those hotels are the controllers, and they use the platform to manage their relationships with hundreds of thousands of guests, or in our terminology, customers. We call the hotels controllers because they determine the purposes and means of processing the personal information of their customers. We use the term processor to describe, in our example, the SaaS provider. Um, and typically that's, that's who we're talking about here because that company is just doing the job given to it by the controller. The controller needs a service rendered. The processor provides the software or the platform to do that. The hotel, in, in our example, wants to manage the personal information of its guests and it needs a tool to do that. So it engages the processor for that purpose. So these are the terms that the GDPR uses, but really the same concepts apply to the CCPA. Under the CCPA, the SaaS provider is typically called a service provider, and the user of the platform is typically called the business, quote unquote business. That is really an oversimplification um, and I, I hate to do this, but uh, I've, we've got to start somewhere. So your understanding can start with, with that. All right. So my clients are typically processors, especially the SaaS companies I serve. I do represent some retail clients and some consulting companies, um, usually software consultants. Um, but 
and, and the retail clients would typically be controllers because they're engaging a SaaS company to provide them services. I don't want to be confusing, um, but if a SaaS company uses the services of a third party to manage the SaaS company's relationship with its customers, it will be a controller in that context. So you're using um, MailChimp or some other, maybe a cloud provider. You've got your system on Azure or um, you know AWS. In that case, you're the controller. And so you have to keep in mind what role you're in for different purposes. Okay, with that terminology and understanding in mind, um, let's get to why we use a DPA and what it is. Under the GDPR, a controller is required to have a contractual relationship describing how the personal information is going to be handled between the controller and its processor. That's where the DPA comes in. It's a data processing agreement. So there, and it talks about how that's going to happen, who will be responsible for what, what security measures are going to be taken. And there are other reasons for a DPA, especially for U.S. companies doing business with European clients. And we'll get to that a little bit later in this video. Now, how does this relate to the CCPA, the California Consumer Privacy Act? Um, having been involved in helping clients comply with, pri with privacy regulations for many years, I've seen the way those regulations have rolled out, and that's important here. The CCPA came out after the GDPR. It would have been really great if you know we had gotten together and had some big confab, and we all used the same terminology. Um, you know, but what I find is that most clients, if if they're gonna if they're U.S clients and they need to comply with the GDPR because they have European customers or they're handling the data of European residents. And if they're also doing business in the U.S., they're going to want to comply with the CCPA as well. And the concepts behind both are very similar, almost identical, um, in my opinion, the, the overall guiding ideas. The terminology is different and there are a lot of different rules, but if you're complying um, with GDPR, um, chance, well, I don't want to oversimplify. It, in essence, you're complying with both. That's not really true because the CCPA has some really specific requirements in terms of notifications and, you know, references to California privacy. So, but, but the general ideas are the same. Um, so, but the CCPA focuses on the role of processors as service providers. We talked about that briefly. Um, and generally that's what the CCPA is going to use for SaaS companies as service providers. They're not determining the purposes or means of the processing. They're actually providing a service in the form of that software platform. So historically, just as companies were getting used to the idea of a DPA under the GDPR, then the CCPA came out. And similar to the GD GDPR, the CCPA requires businesses to have a contractual relationship with their service providers to avoid some of the liability that they would otherwise have. When they have those contracts in place and in the contract, they say that they're not going to use any of that personal data for any purposes other than to provide the service to the business, then there are some liability protections there for both. So um, many companies just took their DPA that they had come up with under the GDPR and they adapted it to add in CCPA terms. And I think that's probably what's going to happen in the future as new um, states come out with new laws, then companies will likely just stay on top of that or try to stay on top of that and incorporate those new provisions right into the, D into the DPA that they're already using. 
And that's actually one of the best things we do at Worldwide Privacy Consultants for Clients. We keep on top of all the regulations as they're getting adopted and changed. And we have a subscription service that we offer to clients where we do a quarterly review of their DPAs and their privacy policies and other contractual documents just to make sure that as things get changed worldwide, um, we're, our clients are keeping up with everything that's happening and adapting their contracts as needed. All right, so let's talk about the relationship of U.S. companies doing business in Europe and how the DPAs relate to that. So Europe has a major problem with the way U.S. companies manage personal information. Historically, really, the U.S. has been the Wild West when it comes to privacy. In essence, here in the U.S., you have none. I'm not going to go into all the history and reasons for what I'm going to say, but Europe has essentially placed the U.S. on a do not trust list since we don't offer our citizens adequate protection of their privacy. Um, so in essence, if a controller in Europe wants to use a U.S. company to process the personal information of its European customers, the controller's European customers, in my example, that would be the hotel guests, then the U.S. company has to enter into an agreement with the controller that incorporates several legal provisions that are required by Europe. Those, um, and again, I'm oversimplifying. I'm not talking about Brexit. I'm not talking about Switzerland, a hundred other things. I'm just trying to understand or help you understand the general concepts here. But the, the standard or the provisions that I'm talking about are called the standard contractual clauses. Those are clauses that were adopted by Europe. And their idea is if you put those into your contract, the contract between the controller and the processor, then, um, then, they're, then they're protected. They're allowed to pass that data into the US. It's actually a long and pretty interesting story to talk about how we got here. It used to be that you could, instead of adopting the or entering into the standard contractual clauses, you could self certify under a set of protocols that was known initially as safe harbor. And then when that was struck down by the European Court of Justice, um, it was replaced by what was supposed to be stronger, the uh, Privacy Shield Protocol. Um, that's also been struck down, which I predicted and many other people predicted it too. The real problem is that the United States, um, the government can snoop on private individuals' information legally. And so when European citizens have their information sent to servers in the United States, it's subject to snooping by the U.S. government. And that's that's always been the central concern of the Court of Justice. It still is. For now, the standard contractual clauses are in effect. But I think it's just a matter of time. All right, so that's a really basic understanding of where we are with DPAs and the standard contractual clauses. So when a potential client asks you, if you're a SaaS company and a potential client asks you for your DPA, that's what they're looking for. If they're from Europe, they're going to want to see not just any old DPA, but they want to see the standard contractual clauses built into that DPA. If they're from the U.S., they probably... Um, are more concerned about ensuring that you qualify as a service provider under the CCPA. So um, I've seen a lot of companies, a lot, that have just signed DPAs or they've cut and pasted something online and really don't understand what they're getting into. Um, but you need to remember that agreeing to the standard contractual clauses subjects you to European law. That's one of the provisions. So if there's a privacy breach and your SaaS company is the processor, you could be forced into a European court, which is not a cheap process. So um, you, need to be, you need to understand 
what you're doing. It's also helpful if you have your own DPA. What I've suggested with my clients is to, in their regular terms of service, refer to this data processing agreement, park your DPA somewhere on your website that they can, you know, it's got its own URL, and then attach the standard contractual clauses to that, which you can fill in the information as, as it's actually used by you. Then when somebody comes to you and says, hey, are you GDPR compliant or CCPA compliant, then it's really easy to send them to that URL and say, yes, it's built into your terms of service already. Here it is. Here are our subprocessors. You've made all the disclosures that you need and you're good to go. I, th I think it's pretty impressive for people in Europe the, or companies in Europe it, by now, um, if you're a serious company in the U.S., you are serious about doing business in Europe, you really should have this in line and are ready to go. And European companies will respect that you're already done that or you have already done that and don't have to ask what's a DPA. OK, I hope that was helpful. Um, I know that I blew past a lot of details that I'm sure you're going to have questions about. And I will try to anticipate and address those questions in future videos. If you like this, please hit subscribe and um, let me know if you have questions in the comments. I'm happy to engage with people and answer questions there. And uh, you can visit us at WorldwidePrivacyConsultants.com. Thank you. Bye.